Hi, David Mintz here with another video lesson, and in this one today, we're going to be talking about arpeggios and scales, and why as guitar players we know both. So, for the example today, we're going to be looking at an A7 arpeggio, an A minor pentatonic scale, and an A7 chord. And all those are going to be found up here in the fifth position. Okay, the root would be on the fifth fret of the bottom E string. Okay. Now, in this lesson, we're not going to go through the details of these, so if you're not familiar with them, uh, let me know and we can set a lesson up to go through them and get you going. But the principle is to understand why I need to learn arpeggios and also learn scales as a guitar player. So what we have in an arpeggio, arpeggio plays the notes that are found exactly inside a chord. Okay, exactly inside a chord. And any note that we play in an arpeggio will sound great against the chord we're playing the corresponding arpeggio for. So in our example, A7, Okay, if I play an A dominant 7 arpeggio, every single one of those notes is found inside that chord. And every single note will sound good against it. Now, if we take the A minor pentatonic scale, found in the same position, root note on the 5th string. Okay, there's our pentatonic scale. There are some common notes between the pentatonic scale and the arpeggio. However, there are some notes that are found in the pentatonic scale that are not in the arpeggio and therefore not in the chord. So, when we're building our lines and our solos, we can use our scale, if you will, as the superset, the big palette of options we have to play notes against, it, against that chord or the set of chords we're playing against to build a solo. We can use the notes inside the arpeggio that when we come back in this example to the A7 chord, if we finish any, on any of those notes out of the arpeggio, the line you're playing or the solo you're playing will sound resolved correctly and sound extremely cool. Now, there are times when you don't want it to resolve correctly, you want it to be a little bit edgy, a little bit on the outside, and that's fine. But this discussion today is why we need to learn the arpeggios. Um, if we know the arpeggios and the scales, then as a result, we'll know the notes that are inside the chord, and then corresponding, one of the notes are outside the chord, so we know both sides of it. Okay, but that's why we want to know both. So as an example, if we take a line, a little lick we have, uh, let's say we take this little lick. Okay, I'm finishing back on the A, okay? That little line comes out of the pentatonic scale and resolves back to the A, so it sounds okay. Back to the A note there. If I take the same line, okay, against the A chord, I finish back on the D note. Sounds okay, but it's still it's a little bit on the outside, not quite resolved. So by knowing I finish on this A note, right inside the pocket, as we would say, we can also resolve it to the say the C sharp, which would be the sixth fret on the uh, third string. Sounds right in the pocket. We could also resolve it to the G note found down here on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Okay, our flat seven. Right inside the chord, so the note fits. We can also maybe take a little line that actually combines. from the arpeggio, resolving back to the 6th fret on the 3rd string, plus C sharp our 3rd, which leads us, the leading tone, back to the A note found on the 7th fret. Sound resolved. So that's the difference why between the arpeggios and the scales, and as guitar players, we really want to know both. Um, so I hope this is helpful to you. Um, drop me a line if you like it, drop me a line if you don't, if you have comments, that's equally good. Uh, and if you'd uh, like to talk about any of the, uh, the shapes and patterns we've used, let me know. And uh, we'll talk next time. Take care. Bye-bye.